March. The next Republican primary is in Florida next Tuesday, and the latest poll there shows Mitt Romney's once commanding 17-point lead over Newt Gingrich has shrunk to just seven points. Less than two weeks ago, Romney was ahead 42 percent to 25. Now it's 41 to 34, with Gingrich gaining nine points. In addition to the horse race, we have been looking closely at the issues and what the candidates would do if elected. Tonight, what Romney and Gingrich would do about taxes. First, Dean Reynolds with the former Speaker of the House. Gingrich has his eyes squarely on the economy as the number one issue, so his tax plan is geared to creating one thing. What's your plan on uh, taxes? I want to create jobs very dramatically, so we have zero capital gains tax to bring in hundreds of billions of dollars of new revenue, new investments. Capital gains tax is paid on income from investments. It's 15 percent. That's why taxes are low on billionaires like Warren Buffett. But Gingrich says not low enough. In addition to eliminating the tax on capital gains, he would abolish estate taxes. For corporations, he would cut income taxes from a maximum of 35 percent to 12 and a half percent. Individual taxpayers would have the choice to file under the current tax policy or choose a 15 percent flat tax. In practice, do you think people would go for the 15 percent? Oh, over? yeah. I think a lot of people they would. They find that more attractive. More than... attractive. It's actually probably a tax cut for some people. It's a tremendous reduction in paperwork and red tape. Gingrich is convinced that reducing or eliminating all these taxes will actually raise revenues for the government by stimulating investment and expanding business. If you lowered taxes, you're going to increase revenues? Sure, which we know worked. When we cut the capital gains tax in the 90s, the revenue went up dramatically. When we cut uh, taxes in the 80s, we had an explosion of 16 million new jobs. To critics who say his tax cutting plans would blow a hole in the deficit, Scott, Gingrich insists he will cut federal spending, he will reform entitlements, and he will open up federal lands for on and offshore oil and gas exploration that could dramatically increase revenues. Thank you, Dean. What would Mitt Romney do with taxes? We asked Jan Crawford to fill us in. Jan? Well, Scott, Romney is not calling for immediate radical change. He would keep personal income taxes at their current rates for now. But there are several key changes that he says will encourage savings and spur job creation. Unlike the other Republican plans, Romney's is more targeted to the middle class. Anyone earning under $200,000 a year, I would propose pay no tax whatsoever on their savings. I think the people who have been most hurt in the Obama economy should be able to save money tax-free. That means Romney would eliminate the tax on dividends, interest, and capital gains only for people who make less than $200,000 a year. He would make other changes that affect all taxpayers, including permanently extending the Bush tax cuts, which lowered individual income tax rates and cut the child tax credit in half eliminating the estate tax and cutting the corporate tax rate from 35 percent to 25 percent. Thanks, gentlemen. Romney says these are just the first wave of reforms and that he will seek to reshape the entire tax code to make it, as he puts it, fairer, flatter, and simpler. It's far too complex. It's far too intrusive. It's far too great. I'd like to lower the rates, broaden the base, get our rates down, and get a pro-growth tax policy in this country. Now, some conservatives, including the Wall Street Journal, have criticized Romney's plan as being too timid. They say it doesn't go far enough to lower taxes now. But Romney's advisors tell me he will have a more comprehensive plan, Scott. He just thinks these changes can get done right away, and that's why he's proposing them first. Jan, thanks very much. We wondered if the federal deficit might increase under the Romney and Gingrich plans, so we talked to the nonpartisan Tax Policy Center in Washington. It estimates that if the Bush tax cuts stay in place, the Romney plan would add $180 billion to the deficit in the year 2015. The Gingrich plan would add $850 billion that year. But remember, the candidates argue that cutting taxes would create so many businesses and jobs that ultimately there would be more tax revenue, not less. A political action committee backing Newt Gingrich made an enormous advertising buy today in Florida, six million dollars. It's one of those cases of the unlimited money that can now be donated to a so-called super PAC. 
We asked Wyatt Andrews to tell us about the Las Vegas couple bankrolling the super PAC that supports Gingrich. Sheldon and Miriam Adelson are among the richest couples in the world, with a fortune Forbes estimated at $23 billion. He owns a global network of hotels and casinos. She is an Israeli-born physician, and their combined gift of $10 million to the super PAC supporting Newt Gingrich is keeping his anti-Romney message on TV in Florida. Think you know, Mitt? Think again. Sheldon Adelson made his billions on his risky decision to implode the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas and replace it with the state-of-the-art Venetian Casino and Convention Center. He has used his fortune to benefit several hospitals, charities, and politicians in Israel. The Adelsons gave a record $25 million to the Yad Vashem Holocaust Center in Jerusalem and are longtime supporters of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. In 1995, friends say Adelson and then Speaker Gingrich first bonded over their shared view of Israel. Adelson was asking Congress to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, a move considered inflammatory to Arabs. Three presidents have called the move harmful for peace, but it's the first thing Gingrich would do as president. There will be an executive order about two hours after the inaugural address. We will send the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem as of that day. Gingrich has also played down the Palestinian claim to statehood by dismissing their legitimacy as a people. We've had an invented Palestinian people uh, who are in fact Arabs. A close Adelson friend told CBS News Sheldon loved it. But is his $10 million gift a form of payment for Gingrich's worldview? Adelson declined our request for an interview, but in a statement described his motivation as loyalty. We hold our friendship with Gingrich very dear and are doing what we can as private citizens to support his candidacy. George Harris, a former employee of Adelson's and now a Gingrich finance director, says Adelson donates his money with no strings attached. And I can promise you something. Mr. Adelson doesn't ask anybody for anything. I don't believe there's any quid pro quo for, for this money at all. But critics argue, public and public interest groups argue that $10 million buys you influence, period. The Adelson gift, for example, has already purchased seven times more ad time in Florida than the entire Gingrich campaign. And Scott, this is the leading example of how these unrestricted super PACs are changing the race for the White House. Wyatt, thanks very much.